Hey guys, welcome back to The Viral, your wormhole from TradFi to DeFi. Today in this video, we're going to talk about the crypto terms that you need to know to succeed in crypto. So as always, we have a disclaimer and funny enough, the disclaimer itself also has its own crypto abbreviation. It's actually not native to crypto, but crypto uses it a lot. And there are two terms, one is DYOR and NFA. So what are they? Do your own research not financial advice. If you haven't already known, we have a free ebook for you. It is an ebook on how you can generate 20%, yes, 20% on your savings. And the link to the download is in the description below. All right, so a lot of the terms that we are going to talk about today is what we as MJSI, as crypto investors, being very active in the crypto telegram groups, in the Discord channels, have come to realize, uh, have come to learn through our experience just being degens. Yeah. And, and degens is something we'll talk about yeah, later we'll as talk well. Yeah, we'll talk about later as well. Through just chatting and spending hours on end on, on uh, some of these servers, right? And we want to introduce these terms because it makes it much easier for you to also be familiar with some of these terms that's commonly used in the crypto world. And we don't think there's a lot of people who introduce a lot of these terms. To and it's very foreign. I think when people come into and see all these different terms, mm. they're like, hey, it's like almost, it's English, but it's a totally different language, right, actually. And I think we are, we'll be segregating uh, serious and non-serious terms. So we'll start with the serious ones. All right. One of the most serious ones, and this is because you put it at the top, I yeah. suppose it's the most serious one, is FUD, yeah. FUD. FUD. What is a FUD, MJ? So actually, FUD can be used in, um, in a, both a serious and a non-serious way, but mm. I think FUD is just fear, uncertainty, and doubt. So usually, people use mm. the term FUD when um, there is a lot of panic or fear and uncertainty and doubt in the markets. Mm. But in the non-serious way, people just use it as a way to say that oh, someone is just stoking up fear or just creating fear out of thin air about maybe a project that the person saying it is, uh, that thinks is good. So, but that's my understanding. Is yours any different? My understanding of FUD is that people are trying to stir up fear, uh, especially if someone is prominent enough, right? That yeah. whatever he or she says through Twitter, which is, you know, the number one channel where most crypto influencers yep. uh, spread their, 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 their ideals by, uh, trying to bring down the price of a certain crypto token. Because they want to buy it lower, right? They want to buy it lower or probably they want to pump up their, you know, they're, they're shorted it, the coin and they want to yep. just Maybe. Get, get their positions in. All right, next term. The next term that we have here is AMM slash DAX. What is that, sir? Okay, so uh, if any of you all use uh, Binance or some of your Malaysians who use Luno, these are what we call centralized exchange, right? There's a CEO, there's a customer support, there's a whole sign up process. So in crypto, uh, a lot of people do not like that kind of, uh, they call it a KYC process, this centralized process. So the replacement for that is what we call an automated market maker or a DAX or DEX, which is a decentralized exchange. So if you have heard of protocols on Ethereum, like Uniswap, then you've got guys like uh, SushiSwap, or everything with a swap, swap, swap is usually an AMM or a DAX. And the function of these uh, protocols are just there for you to swap your tokens interchangeably. Mm. And to, to add on to your point on AMMs, right, one of the terms that we wrote here is called liquidity. And to be fair, right, I, I kind of know, yeah. and this is something that I was assigned to, to figure out the definition of, right? Yeah. It's when you talk about the word liquidity, I yeah. kind of know what it means. It means yes. that you want to have enough supply of a token in an exchange or it's in It's like pool. the word love, right? <laughs> it's so hard to put yeah. it into exact words yes, to yes. describe what it is. Yep. But I really like this definition I've written down here. It is the most, in the, in the most simplest form, right? Liquidity refers to how easy it is to convert cryptocurrency, so be it your Bitcoin, Ethereum, or your Cardano, <laughs> Cardano into cash yep. quickly. And whether or not this can be achieved without messing up the price of the token. So for example, let's say you mentioned uh, the AMM called uh, SushiSwap earlier. Yep. So let's say SushiSwap has about a million Ethereum in the pool. If someone goes and buys like 100 Ethereum, right, that's not going to change or fluctuate the price a lot because the liquidity of Ethereum is deep enough that 100 Ethereum out of the pool won't affect it too much. But if a whale, which we'll talk about later what a whale actually Yeah, what means, a whale is. If a whale goes and decides to buy like 800,000 worth of Ethereum, 
that's going to skew the price of Ethereum by a lot. That's going to spike up the price by a lot because there's so little Ethereum left in the pool and people who want to buy it actually have to pay a premium for it. Yeah. So this doing the research on the world liquidity has made me better understand what it actually means. Yep. There are many ways to use it. It's also a trad fight term as well, right? Traditional finance term. Yeah. So yes, next word. Next word, we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about DAOs. And DAOs. I think by the time this video is released, uh, one very popular DAO for at least a lot of the male viewers out there yeah, yeah. that would have surfaced would be Irene DAO. Yeah, if you've heard of Irene DAO, so maybe you're wondering what a DAO is. It's basically a decentralized uh, autonomous organization. It's Think of it as uh, the crypto version of a company. The only difference is that um, it's very decentralized and there's, uh, there's voting. People can vote on whether someone should be uh, at a certain position. So imagine employees being able to vote whether the CEO should be there or not. Mm. So it's, it's something like that. It's a very new term and there are a lot of DAOs popping up. Um, but yeah, do you have anything else to say about a DAO? So it's basically just a decentralized company. That's how I see it. So would you say, right, now you coming from a very experienced uh, TradFi background, yeah. would you say it's very much like the rights of a shareholder? In a sense? Something like that. It is quite close. So some people have likened it to a limited, li limited liability corporation or an mm. LLC too, so, so that people can understand it a little bit better. But of course, uh, DAOs are a lot more like fluid, mm. right? So like if you join, let's say a company, right, as an employee, you can't be sacked so easily. But DAOs, people can just kick you out, yeah. decide not to pay you, and, and vice versa, right? Like, if you're really good, then maybe uh, if the leader of the DAO and the group that manages the big chunk of the DAO likes you, then you can go up really fast. Mm. So, yeah, it's just a way, actually, I think a, a much better way to understand it, it's just a way to organize um, people within the crypto community yeah. towards a certain goal, usually. Right, right. I mean, some examples I've written here, there's a lot of DAOs that exist out there. I mean, Irene DAO being the, yeah, the, the, the premier one right now. But MakerDAO, yep. MakerDAO is essentially a decentralized autonomous organization that is, main focus is to create the adoption, uh, to spur the adoption of the, the cryptocurrency, the stablecoin DAI. DAI yep. And then you have things like uh, Bankless DAO, which is one that focuses on creating media for people to better understand what crypto is, what Web3 is. And... There's one also called Charity DAO. I think this is what would be what most people will understand better. Yep. It's a DAO where most of the funds that you get, if you're a member of the DAO, you can actually decide, I want to donate it to like this charity that supports Paralympics. We were just talking about it during lunch. I want to support this charity that uh, helps with you know, reef conservation. I want to support this DAO that does uh, all the other stuff in terms of charity. So it's, I think it's still very, very early days. Very early. I think it's going to progress to way more than what it is right now. But that is, in essence, what DAO is. All right, the next term we're going to talk about is HODL. HODL, hold on to dear life. That's pretty much it. But usually people use it to say, uh, you know, it's usually used in, in times of solidarity where, where uh, you know, maybe the market's crashing and, you know, people need to hold on to it. And so they'll say HODL. Yeah. Or it can refer to a type of investing style in uh, the crypto markets where you see you just buy and hold. Uh, I think in the traditional finance world, it's called buy and hold. In crypto, it's just called hodl. Well, I think the, 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 the term hodl actually means holding on or for a day of life. Yes, correct. And I think the origins based on, I think, uh, Urban Dictionary was that someone during it's 2017, spelled. when someone bought Bitcoin at the high of $20,000, that was the peak back then, right? And when Bitcoin crashed to about 3,000, uh, yeah. one of the, the members in the group actually typed, hey guys, don't sell, just hodl. Yeah, you wanted to type just la. hold. Yeah. And you type just hodl. And that's usually how memes come to yeah. fruition. Lovely, right? lovely. Okay, next the next word. one I want to talk about, and this is something that uh, I was, uh, when I picked you up earlier, we were, I was listening to the podcast on it because, again, it's some of the words, a term that you, you kind of know what it is, but you just can't put it into words, right? And this term is Web3. And Web3 is, you know, it's getting all the, all the rage on wherever it is, social media, on yeah. Twitter. How would you, what, what, what comes to mind when you think about Web3, MJ? So Web3 is, I think itself is not well formed yet, but the idea is that um, in the past, you own, you don't own in Web1. Okay, so like Web1 would be like uh, emails or mm. basic 
like Google search or something. That's like the web one. So web two would be your social media era, right? Mm. Uh, your 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 Instagrams and your uh, Google, uh, yeah, some like YouTube and things like that. So web three is where you see in web two a lot of your data actually belongs to all these big tech companies like Facebook, uh, uh, Twitter, and all that. So what Web3 does is that it's transferring ownership from the big tech guys to you. So uh, uh, to, I mean, there's a lot to talk about in Web3, yeah. obviously. But I'm just going to give one example so that we can keep it short. Let's say if you play a game today, right? Mm. Um, let's say it's a, a, a game where you're a character and then you have a weapon. So in Web2, that weapon, yes, is in your account, but that actually belongs to the game. Whereas in uh, Web3, you actually own that, that sort. That actually belongs to you. And it's very linked to NFTs, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. Okay. So that's my brief uh, explaining to you. And Web3 is this, it's, it's, it, we cannot use one. I would, I'm just using one so it's simple to understand, but you, it, it's very hard for me to just use one to explain the totality of Web3. Because Web3 is a very big, broad yeah, man, term. It's like, it's like IoT, you know? You know what I mean? It's like IOT or it's like, it's like crypto. Can you explain crypto to me? Yeah, it's like, yeah. uh, I mean, you can explain the, the dictionary definition, but who's going to benefit from yeah, that, yeah. right? I mean, just, just to close out the, the Web3 uh, section, right? Uh, the example that I read online, uh, and I like this example, was in Web1, you go on the internet browser, you look at a map, and the map is non-interactive. You look at a map of uh, Paris, for example. You use yes. that map and then you just travel around Paris uh, using the map as a guide. In Web2, that's when interaction from the user to the app or to the platform comes along. And you get things like Grab. You can now use your phone and order a Grab and you yep. can use that Grab to travel to Paris. Right. But in Web3, uh, it's where they want to give the ownership and the rights back to the users. And let's say you get a, a Web3 version of Grab. And you, as a token holder of, I suppose, a Web3 version of Grab, every transaction or every money that you know the Grab service offers, you as a user, you as the, I suppose, token holder slash investor, gets a, a share of the pile. So, yep. but there's more to say about this. I don't think we can we can cover it in a few yeah, minutes. We might just do a, a dedicated video yeah. on it in the future, man. All right, moving on from Web3, we're going to talk a little bit about fork. F-O-R-K, sir. Okay, so very simply, uh, a fork happens when, let's say there's this project, let's call it Project A. Um, they are going a certain direction, but then there are people within the community that don't agree with the direction of the project. And so they decide to take the code base of that project and fork it and basically go their own way. So I think Bitcoin is a very good example. You've heard of Things like Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin SV, all these different Bitcoin forks. Next term, you mentioned it earlier. Let's talk about NFTs. Tell me about it, man. Yeah, NFTs. Basically, to understand NFTs, you need to understand what an FT is, a fungible token. So a fungible token is a token that can be replicated. So for example, Bitcoin is a fungible token because one Bitcoin is the same as one Bitcoin. It's the same as one Bitcoin and there's 21 or there ought to be 21 million of them. So they are fungible, right? Mm. One Bitcoin is not any different than the other. So a non-fungible token just means that there's something special about this particular token. And it can be represented in, I think in the current form, it's a JPEG. In the future, it will be maybe a gaming item. It can be a picture. It can be anything, right? Mm. So non-fungible, what it essentially tries to do is to say that this is a unique thing. This is a unique thing that was created at a specific date with certain code bases and it cannot be changed and it will forever be on the blockchain. And that's what non-fungible means. At the end of the day, it's about creating ownership. So for example, in the future, maybe there will be houses. I'm quite sure there will be houses where your proof of ownership will be in an, an NFT. So an NFT will pretty much guarantee that you own this house because it is non-fungible. It cannot be replicated. But that's how I would explain NFTs. But again, it's another big word. Lah. Yeah, it is. And, it's, and I mean, we're trying to explain it in the most normy term. Yes, the what normal you say? way. Yeah. What, is, what is normy, by the way? It's yeah. also a very popular word in crypto. It's yeah, no, nor, normy is just, uh, you know, how people feel, uh, like people who are normal, like people are not deep into crypto. Yeah. That's how 
That's what I would say. Okay, guys. Uh, we also have a Telegram group chat. We'll be excited to have you there. A lot of buzz goes on there. Some alpha as well, which is another term we'll talk about later on. Uh, yeah, so you can actually join it in the comment section or the description box. All right, seamless transition away from what you just said. What is alpha, MJ? Yeah, so alpha is just information or insights that you might get from someone or somewhere mm. that gives you some sort of edge in terms of doing well in the crypto markets. Hey, what do people spell it as? A-L-F-A? Because, uh, <sighs> because, we because can. crypto, yeah, because we can. No? Crypto guys do it. All right, GM and GN. So yeah, I know this is the, the non-serious part, right, of, of, uh, of the terms. So correct, GM correct. and GN, good morning, good night. What is WAGMI, W-A-G-M-I? Uh, WAGMI is uh, we all going to make it. And then it has the opposite variation, which is NGMI, which is not going to make it. So WAGMI is very interesting because it uh, embodies that attitude that everybody can make it in crypto, which... Personally, I don't believe that's true, but it's a, it's a fun, I think it's a very fun aspect of crypto when everyone used the word wang me. I actually wonder where all these terms actually come from. Who's the first person to actually use this Yeah, term, you need man. to do a lot of research. Huh? You know what, if we create an encyclopedia out of it, maybe yeah, we can uh, sell it, man. How about ape? How would you define what ape is? How, how about you give it a go? I, ape is what I do on a daily basis. Yeah. When yeah. I go on Twitter, and this is something I mentioned I want to do less of, when you go on Twitter, you see someone just mentioning a coin and says that this is going to go up soon, hear me, hear my words, and come back to me again in two weeks. And he puts a crypto symbol over there. And then you just buy into it without doing uh, further research because, you know, being early, being an hour early sometimes can make the world of difference in like how much ape you make. Yeah, you're like apes don't think when they buy stocks. Yeah, yeah. It, what, stocks is it? Or, crypto? or, or anything. Because a ape can be used for many, but it's mostly crypto. Uh, make any investment. Uh, you can you can ape into a house also into a house if you want to as well. That is the the philosophy of succeeding in crypto. Yes. Ape. Uh, NFA by the way. Yeah. NFA. The next one we have here is LFG. Uh, it's last effing go. That's it. Okay. okay. Why is McDonald's so prominent in crypto Twitter? Why is it such a uh, prominent brand? So it always happens during a bear market or during a crash of crypto. So mm. everyone. But in it, suddenly they feel a lot poorer, so they go back to McDonald's and work. That's the McDonald's. No no offense to, to McDonald's, though. Yeah. I think it's a very noble job, honestly. Yes. How about frog? And speaking of which, where's the frog? That Oh, yeah, we didn't get the frog today. It's okay. It's fine. Yeah. Well, frog is a very uh, deep term, actually. Frog represents the original, I would say the original ethos of uh, the crypto people where they are not influenced by either big tech, venture mm. capital, big governments, and powerful people, where it's ordinary people who just wants to make a living and, and do well with crypto. And those are called uh, frogs, basically. Okay. Frog nation. There's a word here, uh, HFSP, which means uh, have fun staying poor. Uh -huh. And it's the total opposite of the word walk me that we mentioned yeah. earlier. Uh, I think it's used in a very derogatory way when someone doesn't agree with your token of, of choice. Yes, yes. They say, hey, you buy this coin, uh, HFSP, has, SP, man, have fun staying poor. Yeah. Selling it this early, have fun staying poor. Yeah. Crypto can be a little bit toxic sometimes. I very say. toxic. Actually. Yeah. How about Degen? We talked about Degen earlier. Would you say Degen is very similar to, to being an ape? Something like that. Uh, Degen is just short for degenerate. Mm. And as the name suggests, uh, the degenerate is someone who does things very few people would do. <laughs> and uh, usually it's used in a way where they are going into projects that have may not, they may not have assessed the risk properly. Mm. So they're just going deep into the project, you know, aping without much thinking. So yeah, there are two very linked words, ape and degen. So a degen would be, you know, someone who usually you know, find farms super early with 1,000% returns. Yeah. But hype, you know, you get risk, big risk, uh, take on big risk, essentially. I mean, being a degen also is very much the philosophy of crypto, right? It's such a brand new landscape. Yeah. And everything that is out, has, you have no historical reference to whether or not this crypto will succeed, who is this guy that founded yeah. it. And I think... In a, in a way, the word degenerate is negative in, in the normal dictionary definition. Yeah. But I think some form of degeneracy 
is kind of needed to succeed or be early in crypto. Yeah. I gotta say. How about boomer coin, man? What is so that? So boomer mean? coins are basically coins that have been around the longest and has the most stable narratives around them, like Bitcoin and Ethereum. Now that's the more proper definition. Usually when people use the word boomer coin, mm. what they're trying to say is that coins that where you can expect low returns. That's what they're really saying. Okay, just the last few terms before we wrap up the video. How about RECT, R-E-K-T? RECT, R-E-K-T is just a very uh, weird way to spell W-R-E-C-K-E-D. So as the name suggests, RECT, uh, you get why, destroyed. La. Why is the word RECT spelled as R-E-K-T? Because crypto. Because we can. Actually, RECT is more used in gaming a lot, actually. So a lot of people who game are now actually mm. crypto investors or, or degens, crypto degens. So... Is use the rack, no? Just transfer over the culture, you know. Yeah, it's the 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 web, the the online game natives are That's now right. embracing the crypto financial economy, right? The last word that we're gonna talk about, the last word that is on the list, paper hands. Paper hands. So I think yeah, you wanna give it a go. I think you give it a go. I think mm. you talk about diamond hands as well, right? These two paper hands, things. diamond hands. Uh, yep. Which one do you want to be? You know. I think paper hands is someone that whenever he buys a token, for example, like myself, before actually researching into it, and then from all the hype that surrounds it on social media, you buy into it and it goes down 10%. And then you panic and you sell it out. That is paper hand. And I have done it in several occasions because I did not DYOR. Mm -hmm. mm. And then diamond hands? Diamond hands is when I DYOR mm -hmm. and then I know the project uh, inside out and even though it goes down by 10%, 20%, I have a conviction to hold through it, to diamond hand through it. Right? How did this term even come about? I am ultra curious right now. I think a lot of it is the emoji. Like, I don't know which came first, the emoji came first or the term came first. Mm. I have no idea. But they put the emoji with the hands like that with the diamond, right? But I think for diamond hands, some people also use the term um, to say like, uh, sometimes maybe the coin, that uh, maybe the fundamentals are not good, but then people somehow still believe in it, so they keep holding on as it goes down. So sometimes people use the word diamond hands in that more negative way as well. Maybe but yeah, these are, the, these are the terms, right? I think yeah. that's about it. And if you uh, enjoy the video, and if you miss out any terms, right, let us know in the comment. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, remember like, comment, subscribe, and uh, you know, follow us on our Instagram page and Facebook page and join the Telegram group. Uh, see you in the next video. Thank you and GN, sir. See ya.